So when we went to Victoria, nobody wanted to be there. Um, they, thought, they said it was the worst state in Australia to, to explore. Um, so we were able to get a first mover advantage in a, an emerging copper belt uh, at, in the Staveley project, in the Staveley Arc. And uh, since that IPO, we've been spending a lot of money drilling. As Nicholas mentioned, we, we drilled 49 holes without a great deal of success, some sniffs, until we really understood what this deposit really was. It wasn't a porphyry per se. It was more uh, a magma style uh, Arizona type deposit. And that was really when the penny dropped and when we really started to hit our stride and, and led to the discovery drill hole. So as Nicholas says, we are in a resource drill out. Uh, it's a new style of mineralization, very exciting, never been seen in Australia before. Um, and we have a, a number of additional discovery opportunities, both within the deposit and at other prospects along the belt. And we've, we've maintained that dominant land position. Um, we're well funded. Uh, at the moment, we have about $10 million in cash, three rigs spinning. So uh, drilling's a bit of an expensive habit, but um, we're well funded for the moment. Just a bit of the corporate uh, uh, slide. You can see where in September where we've made that discovery, the share price has jumped. Um, it sort of slid off a little bit since then, and, and the uh, pandemic certainly has, has rocked markets. But we're coming back strongly. We're getting a good string of drill results, and, and you know we don't see this as dissimilar to the global financial crisis, where at our previous company in Integra, we went down to $0.08 cents during that crisis in the market and eventually we, uh, we agreed to take over at around 50 cents. So nothing really changed between those two values except the sentiment in the market. The story was strong. So really what we're doing is that we're in a really good space in terms of copper. Um, the global economy needs copper for, for infrastructure projects but also this transition to a low carbon economy is a really strong thematic with uh, electric cars. Uh, wind power, solar power, et cetera, et cetera. So copper is definitely the space to be. And certainly, it's the space to be when you're in a first world jurisdiction. And, and those sorts of quality projects don't come up very often. And we believe that we've discovered a new belt. So that's the exciting part. So it is in Western Victoria. It's about three hours uh, to the uh, west of Melbourne. Uh, it's very good infrastructure, a wind farm nearby, 65 megawatts. We're uh, a railway station, a railway line goes straight through the project area, goes to the deep water port of Portland, and uh, you know a, a very good position and a very good ground position. We focused on the Thursday's Gosson deposit. It had a chalcosite enriched blanket that exists somewhere between 30 to 80 meters below surface. Um, none of the previous explorers recognised that this actually wasn't a, a, a chalcosite blanket developed on a porphyry. It was actually developed on the uh, surface expression of these high-grade veins. We've now realized that and those high-grade veins occur on the northeast and eastern margins of the porphyry system and they are controlled by major structures. And that's what we're drilling out now. So up in that top portion we had focused on drilling some porphyry magnetite veins. They look very much like uh, Cadia Ridgeway deposit and certainly a, a worthy prize to, to be chasing. And that culminated in a uh, hole 49, which is a 1.8 kilometer deep drill hole seeking the deep porphyry. That hole was spectacularly unsuccessful. Having said that, we had had a couple of high grade hits at depth in a series of holes that I'll, I'll touch on later on. But our consultant said, well, look, maybe you shouldn't be looking for the deep porphyry. Maybe you should be looking for surface expression of this higher grade material you've seen at depth. So hole 50 was, was planned and drilled in September last year, and it intercepted 32 meters at almost 6% copper and a gram gold. And, and really, as a geologist, to, to look at the color of the core and the nature of the mineralization, it was really, we knew we were onto something special. If you had a stick of core that was 100% chalcopyrite or copper sulfide, you would get 26% copper. But in two meter interval, we got high grade 40% copper, which is these higher order copper minerals, boronite and chalcosite. So we knew it was a very special system. So we've been drilling consistently since then with three and four rigs at a time, uh, really trying to map out where the mineralization is. It's, it's structurally controlled on a northwest trending structure. And we've now mapped it out over intensively over about 700 meters, but the full strike of the system at the moment is one and a half kilometers. 
And that's very typical of the type of system that we've got in these magma Arizona type systems. So in long section, this is what it looks like. We've got a low angle structure there that's a little offset, but it doesn't make much difference in terms of where the mineralization continues. And we've mapped, we're currently trying to map it out as a resource in that 200 meters depth to, to surface. Ostensibly what you would consider resources available for open pit. And we're starting to get a few deeper hits now and, and they would give us encouragement that there may be potential for underground as well. This is uh, the announcement from, or sections from the announcement on Monday on the left-hand side, hall 87. Uh, quite a substantial hit of 87 meters at 1.74% copper and 5.57 grams gold with higher grade intervals of, of 24 and 9 meters at around 4% copper and a gram and a bit gold. So it really is quite special. Uh, the metallurgy looks very good. It's a low arsenic system. And we have been quite surprised at the consistency and coherency of the mineralization along strike in this structure. You see the low angle structure there offsetting mineralization. It offsets about 50 meters to the west. And importantly, in that announcement, we described uh, hall 85 that intercepted mineralization below the low angle structure. And now we're starting to get a number of hits under that low angle structure, giving us the confidence the mineralization probably extends to in excess of a kilometer depth which is the depth that we've hit it in other structures nearby. So we use the Magma Arizona model. It's, it's very similar in style and character. And these systems are uh, multiple high-grade structures. They're vertically and laterally extensive. Um, and you can map your way through the system by the species of the copper sulfides so that it changes as you get closer to the source porphyry, which is, in the case of magma, the resolution porphyry at depth. So that top of that mineralization in the porphyry is 1.5 kilometers it down, but Rio Tinto and BHP are, are seeking to develop that deposit in Arizona. So this being the little fly through, map of Australia down the right, bottom right corner, Victoria, and our tenure uh, just uh, three hours drive east of Melbourne. Uh, the land use is, is broad acre cropping mainly and lesser grazing. There's no hobby farms or anything like that. This is industrial scale cropping through the area, um, just south of the Grampians National Park, but well away from it, say 25 kilometers. Um, number of porphyry and copper prospects along the strike of the, the volcanic belt. And uh, we've been focusing primarily on the porphyries around Thursday's Gosson. Uh, there's two other porphyry prospects within about 10 kilometers. Um, there is a chalcosite blanket, as I mentioned, developed on Thursday's Gossen, structurally controlled mineralization, and that has a resource of about 28 million tons at 0.4% copper. So as we start to think of open pit on the higher grade structurally controlled mineralization, that chalcosite resource will come into the pit as, as uh, low grade mineralization with the high grade structurally controlled stuff mined as well. So just flying into where that resource lives on the ground, as I say, broad acre cropping throughout the area, um, it's, it's quite flat. Um, a bit challenging to work in at the moment because there's very little drainage and it rains a lot there during the winter. But uh, this footage was taken only, say, a month ago. Um, the crops have been planted and four rigs in a row there. Um, so we're intensively drilling this thing out. We've done quite a bit of drilling in the early days, and you can see some of the deeper holes on the left-hand side there. We had a great deal of encouragement from the assays and from uh, petrology and, and mineralogy that we were sitting near a porphyry. Um, but as I say, we drilled a deep hole that was a duster, and we were told to look for something a bit higher grade, shorter, uh, shallower. And so this is hole 50. We've got that 32 meters at almost 6% copper and a gram gold from about 62 meters, so very shallow. Um, looks beautiful, uh, you know, a, a stick of core that a geologist could fall in love with. Um, and uh, since that time, we've done a lot of drilling. Um, so we'd be up to hole 95 at the moment. So we've drilled another 45 holes into it. As I say, the mineralization has been surprisingly consistent, um, very coherent body of mineralization. That hole 87 is that little blue bob in the, in the, the gap. But we've had other hits in other structures parallel to this structure. Um, so the hits are almost a kilometer deep, and we've defined the strike of the one load to one and a half kilometers. We draw the analogy between Butte, uh, Montana, and Magma, Arizona. 
and the magma deposit, as I say, multiple high-grade mineralized structures. This was mined for 86 years before BHP bought the deposit. It's vertically and laterally extensive, in this case in excess of a kilometer and a half tall and probably three kilometers laterally. And those multiple mineralized structures lead down to the porphyry at depth. And the sulfide species are zoned, so it really maps you out and tells you which direction you should be going to be looking for the porphyry. And certainly that's an evolving story with Staveley. We've recently done some seismic. We're doing a lot of petrology, et cetera, and, and eventually, say near the end of this year, we're going to have a stab at the deep porphyry with a couple of holes. So it's, it's very significant size of system. We're only looking at the top 200 meters of one structure so far. This is the uh, EM conductivity image showing that there's the chalcosite blanket and then you can see a number of mineralized structures within that uh, EM image. We're only focused on the one at the moment, the Cayley structure, but the copper load splay and the north south structure, we have hit this style of mineralization in both of those. The copper load splay in uh, about 550 to 600 meters depth in hall 32 and hall 44 and then on the north south structure in hall 44 and 44 wedge one at about 850 to 900 meters depth. So a very tall system. And each of these structures should be mineralized to those sorts of depths and beyond. So this is brand new seismic, um, very early and preliminary interpretation showing a magma chamber at depth with high level porphyries and a whole bunch of structures, all of which could potentially be mineralized because it's a bloody big system. The gravity lows show the alteration around these porphyries. So we've got Thursday's Gossen up the top there, junction in the middle and Mount Stavely below. Really, we've only focused on, on Thursday's Gossen, but a series of these pull-apart basins uh, provide space for the porphyries to come up through. So there's a lot of prospectivity along strike. And we've got a lot of drilling to go. We're only drilling out 200 meters of a structure we think is mineralized to at least a kilometer depth. We've got two other mineralized structures that we really haven't gotten around to yet. And so there's a lot of work in front of us. And then we have the porphyry at depth as well. So we'll have a, t a big swing at that near the end of the year. You can see in the, in the uh, EM data that those structures are relatively well mapped out. As I say, the ultramafic contact fault is the one that hosts the Cayley load. And uh, we're focusing on the shallow portion of that at the moment. But there are other structures that we need to get to and uh, they'll add to the potential economics of this project as we flesh them out. And this is what it looks like in section. Multiple hits on multiple structures, and, and the grades are quite good, and point you to that hit at 850 meters in, in hole uh, 44 wedge one, you know, uh, eight, 18 meters at 3.6%. Um, beautiful hit, and if we can get more of those on these other structures, we can demonstrate for a kilometer's height, we've got the shallow, say, open pitable, if you will, resource. And then we look to bring that down to depth. And we bring hits in the copper load splay up to surface, and likewise deep hits in the north-south structure up to surface. And in the seismic, we would interpret that there's a number of other structures that could potentially host mineralization that we haven't seen in the drilling yet. So we, and we need to test those regional targets and, of course, go for the porphyry. So really. The, the key message is that we're a first mover in a, a new copper province in, in Western Victoria. We've made a discovery. It looks like a bloody big system. Um, you know, it's, it's mineralized in our drilling from 62 meters down to over 1,000 meters. Um, we're just drilling the shallow bit at the moment, and there's a, a lot to go. Thank you. Thanks very much, Chris. Um, lots okay. of questions coming in, so we'll just quickly try and get through them. We'll yep. try and deal with them as many as we can. Firstly, an investor has asked, you're in the middle of prime farming land, how are the environmental permissions progressing and what's the sentiment of the local farming community? Look, I think, uh, for example, we had, when, when he was the, the minister, we had, um, uh, well, Dan Tien, the education minister, who's the local federal minister, and also um, uh, the, the resources minister, um, trying to remember his name, he had to step down. <laughs> But anyways, we, we had them on, on, on site uh, looking at the drilling for the junior minerals uh, in, incentive, exploration incentive, and they wanted to see what a junior explorer doesn't have any revenue do. Happens that uh, we introduced them to the local landholder where we were drilling at the time, and, and they said, well, what, how do you feel about these boys being here? 
drilling on your property? And, and the answer was, well, look, the, the, the local primary school has had to shut down and the kids have to bus up to Dunkeld to go to school. The local footy club didn't have enough players. They had to amalgamate with Lake Bolak down the other direction. There's no kids on the oval kicking the footy. We really need something in the area to diversify the economy and, and keep families in the country. And so there's, that is a, an overwhelming uh, sentiment. Uh, it's echoed in the, the local councils. So they want to diversify the economy and they want well-paying, skilled labour jobs in the regional areas to keep families there. Excellent. Another investor's asked, what sort of production time frame could you envisage for a, a project of this scale? Well, look, I think um, where we're at with the drilling, we've probably got another 18 months worth of drilling to do. We'll flesh out the, the, the near surface resource again that you would reasonably consider might be available for open pit mining. And then we need to start fleshing out the, the underground potential. And it may not be that we need to drill it into a resource to a kilometre's depth. Uh, that would be too costly. And you'd probably do that from revenue as you got going. We, going through approvals and, and, and uh, feasibility studies is probably another two years or so. So we're probably looking four to five years. Great. And then another investor uh, just asked, when discussing the idea of a new province, uh, when will you test some of the other opportunities in the land package, Mount Staveley, Junction, etc.? Yeah, that likewise is, is slated for later on this year. It, it's really a case of logistics where, as I say, it's wet there in the winter and it's more difficult to support drilling activities uh, during the wet, but it sort of gets a bit more manageable from the 1st of October, so it'll be later in this year. And just one final quick one, what's the best geological analogue and why? I think you may have answered Yeah, look, it, we, we believe it is magma. Um, it, we're showing all of the attributes of this type of system and uh, we've written a couple of, of technical papers that we'll put up on the website that sort of explain the analogy between this and magma, but it's, it's to do with how big it is, how it's manifest as, as high-grade load style mineralization and also the sulphide distribution and how it really replicates what we're seeing at MAGMA. And it's a well-documented system. Mm -hmm.